Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Ryan. I'm a former Royal Marines commando from the United Kingdom. And today we've got an update on Ukraine. Today's date is the 30th of May. 2024 for reference for this video guys um haven't done these for a while i want to kind of get back into it okay so like share subscribe to the channel if you're brand new here thanks for being here and if you've been here before thanks for coming back troops let's just get straight into it no wasting time okay so this is up to date as of 12 3500 hours today the 30th so when i'm using time frames and stuff um that'll give you a little bit of reference so approximately an hour ago let's get straight into it in this region here if we can zoom in a bit the northern point of the black sea we've got about seven drones um that were reportedly shot down over the krasnodar Krai. so this is the area itself looks like it's um you know areas where there's quite a few ports and stuff like that ports potentially to get ships and things fixed ports where you'll get goods to and from um quite a quite a busy area here with a lot of infrastructure in and around this area factories and whatnot so these areas in particular probably for logistic nodes um you know getting supplies to and from this looks like uh what is this here yeah, it's a definitely a factory complex of some sort isn't it yeah so there was seven drones were shot down over this region um a lot of workers who probably work here in fact, I think there's a bit of footage on this. So let's get a look at that. Um, here we go. There we go. Oh, there we go. So someone's obviously just got this on the phone. You see there's like um, silos or something almost, isn't there? And those drones, drones were shot down. It doesn't explicitly say how they were shot down. Pretty hard to do via small arms fire, that's for sure. But um, unless they've got proper countermeasures in place, that'll be pretty difficult troops, okay? Um, so that's there. So those drones causing a bit of, bit of an issue there. Uh, two hours ago, I think it's pretty close in terms of the region. No, I'm not. It's quite quite far away, actually. So if we move up to here, several boats and ferries were damaged in and around here near the Ravach River. Five people were wounded as a result of the explosions. This happened overnight within this region here. See loads of different river systems and stuff and lakes and everything within this area. Um, the area in detail is looking like this guys bit of farmland residential it looks actually right next to these uh rivers they've got a few little ports and stuff used for probably transportation hence the reason the boats that were damaged were um ferries and such so transport vehicles effectively troops three hours ago in this region here we had explosions in the area of Anarchy. Um, so this area itself is um, is actually a tank training ground. So you can think of it um, just logically. A tank training ground is going to need to be quite big. You know the type of training that they are doing, um, ranging from reconnaissance to assault to defensive measures. The area itself is going to have to be quite big, especially if they're using live ammunition on some of the ranges and stuff here, which I presume they've probably got. Um, it would make sense to have that as part of the training ground. So there's explosions that occurred here. You can tell that it's a tank training ground just by all of the tracks. So for reference, um, the, the entirety of what you can see here is a couple of kilometers long so this area here is, is is a couple of square kilometers all right at least what we can see loads of different tank marks and stuff like that we can see what looks like firing positions where these tanks would be um you know located uh, for different fire missions and stuff training exercise you can see the indents on the ground where they'd actually be located some of these places are buildings some of these areas are going to be where they put targets and stuff so um this is quite an active area indeed 
you've got the main routes going up and then you've got little branch networks of uh, tracks all over the place. But looks like there's quite a lot of live firing done here, troops. And there was three explosions in this area, this tank training ground, about two hours ago it was reported. So, yeah, we can assume that it's not the explosions from the tanks, it's explosions for, you know, um, deeds not very good, so to speak. Right next to it, you've got obviously built up areas as well. Um, I would like to think if this is a tank ground, a tank training area, that a lot of this infrastructure should be associated to the military. Now, when I went in uh, different countries with the Royal Marines, it wasn't as well thought out as the British military would do things, okay? So you would have a training area and then it would be right on top of like a local populace, for instance, which does happen in some training areas in the UK, but normally you would find that a lot of the areas are um, very well sealed off from the public view, especially when it's a live training area. Um, and only then will it be uh, safe to put those areas next to or quite close to local populaces. But these areas here are quite literally on the, on the borders of this area, this training ground. So I would like to think that a lot of it's military infrastructure. If it's not, it just goes to show you the different rules and regulations associated with it. This area here is definitely part of the military infrastructure. Looks like just a big car park or possibly a storage depot for certain tanks and bits of equipment there. Maybe there's a couple of bits of accommodation for the tanky drivers and whatnot. Um, but yeah, so another two hours ago in this area, we've got wreckage of a drone in Stromoskavivka. 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 I can't pronounce this stuff. So wreckage, right, what is this? Wreckage of a drone, right, okay. Got a couple of batteries on the floor, something, a few wires. Does it prove that it's a drone? Yeah, I mean, possibly, but it's, in a nutshell, nothing uh, nothing too serious, it doesn't look like anyway. So where was that? That was in uh, near the Donetsk region, that. Three hours ago, we've got explosions and fire between Ivanivka and Deniskvika village near um in this area here. So we've got loads of explosions happening just south of that as well. So the area in detail where we're looking at in terms of these explosions is fields effectively, okay? Fields, a couple of built up areas, possibly fighting back and forth for um, position. But let's just have a look at what we're talking about here. So these explosions and fire between these areas in detail. In the background, you can see smoke, Something looks like it's possibly being shot from the sky um, because obviously the fire would go out, but the fact that it's still on fire, possibly, I don't know, possibly something that's shot out of the sky. That's what I'm going with anyway. Uh, let's go to Kharkiv. As a result of a night attack, let's zoom out a bit so you understand where we're looking at. Um, as a result of a night attack, seven people were injured. Russian army hit the administrative building um, of the heating service provider and another 23 houses were damaged. So a heating service provider. Um, let's let's talk about this. So this area is, is rough, okay? It's near an auto chemistry stock, uh, shop on here. But let's just um, assume that these areas, uh, it's just a rough area, but it is built up. It looks like we've got loads of different businesses and stuff like that within this area in situ. Okay. Why would they be talking a heating supplier? Well, it's, it's quite obvious when you think about it, if you can take away, um, you know, uh, creature comforts for the locals, then it just sickens you. It sickens you throughout the whole process. And that's the aim of war. Long term, all right, it changes slightly from being all out warfare, which we saw the first few um, months, especially, certainly the first year or so. And then it gets drawn out because munitions and weaponry and money starts dwindling and they start having to think about the long term game, the war of attrition, so to speak. So when we're talking about, you know, Russian army taking and um, striking certain areas, administrative buildings of heating service providers. It's to sicken the local populace, okay? No heating in certain months of the year. It's going to be pretty horrible, isn't it? So it's um, there's method in the madness when we talk about stuff like that. And you see it happening in war time and time again, especially the ones that get um, drawn out for long periods of time, 
all right? Um, Ukrainian military intelligence destroyed Russian fast boats. These fast boats, um, I believe, are called KS-701 tunnels in occupied Crimea um, with Magura V-5 naval drones. I think we've got some footage of this as well. But this area that we're talking about happened in and around here. So that big um, concave type of feature, it looks like a, a port of some sort. A port slash resort slash a bit of both, to be fair. Built up areas. It looks like... Um, it doesn't look like there's any factories or anything within this area. It looks like nice residential properties, nice bit of beach. You know, in the summer, this area will be booming, um, or was anywhere. On the opposite side, we've got your your ports and stuff where your boats can come come alongside. And poss it's possibly like a tourist destination, this. So, yeah, Ukrainian military intelligence destroyed two Russian fast boats, probably is within this area. Um... What are they doing in this area in the first place? Well, you've got these ports alongside. You've got these barges and stuff where they can come alongside and, you know, resupply for food, water, let the lads have time off, all of that. So these areas are um, a bit sticky when it comes to warfare and uh, vulnerable as well. Let's have a look at this. I think we can see something here. Let's see what we can see. So the footage is very choppy. Bang. Right, let's turn this music down. We don't need that stuff. Right, what what is this? Okay, this so it's it's like a a drone boat. Oh wow. So we've got helos and everything in here. This is a big this is a big big operation. And they've got quite a bit of footage of this as well. Yeah, there's a lot of munitions being fired here. So within this little fracas, a big fracas it looks like, happened at night, two Russian fast boats were, were destroyed. Okay. I don't know what this thing is that is gathering. Oh, right. Okay. So it's like a boat, a drone boat that's capable of destroying, you know, bigger vehicles and vessels. That's quite impressive, actually. Okay. So five hours ago, Russian occupational authorities detained four men in Crimea and accused them um, of working on behalf of Ukraine intelligence. Oh, okay. Russian occupation authorities. So Russian occupation authorities, that could be <laughs> that could be anybody, okay? Um it could be, you know, the Russian SF guys, Russian, you know, police equivalent, uh, military police equivalent. It could be a couple of a couple of mercenaries. Yeah, who knows what that means. But Russian occupational authorities detained four men in Crimea, accused them of working on behalf of Ukrainian intelligence. So this is a pretty dangerous area if you think about the um, the area in detail, obviously it's red for a reason. Uh, you don't want to be captured behind enemy lines and accused of being in Ukrainian intelligence. You can bet your bottom dollar that those guys, unfortunately, are going to have a, a rough a rough time as of now. Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov, the planned delivery of the F-16 uh, sorry, to Ukraine is seen as a signal from NATO in the nuclear field. Right, so let's talk about this. There's been a lot of talk about, you know, NATO boots on the ground and stuff like that, a potential possibility. I'm going to ask you guys that. Do you think that is a possibility that NATO will, you know, eventually have boots on the ground? NATO allied forces, Britain, France, you name it. Because the way this is going, um, people thought this would have been over within the first month or two. I think people forget that. People thought that Russia was going to absolutely smash them very, very early on. Um... The way it's gone right now, if it keeps on going the way it is, Ukraine, I don't think, can win. And that's just me being honest. I want them to, you know, prevail. But look at this. Look at this red area. That's not going to disappear anytime soon. Um, gone are the days where we had the major pushback from Kharkiv eastwards. All right. All of these areas, if you remember, were red and overrun. But um, we haven't seen any kind of major movement like that since. All right. And it's been a long, long time since I've done these updates. So I don't know what's going to happen. 
NATO escalation, what's that going to do for Ukraine? That's well, going to help out on the ground, certainly. But what that does is it expands the whole thing all over the place. Is Russia prepared to go deeper into the field other than Ukraine? I think potentially, if provoked, yeah, I do think so. Hopefully it doesn't get that far, guys. Um, six hours ago, Ukrainian air defense shot down seven of the 11 um, KH-101 cruise missiles and 32 Shahid drones. Those Iranian drones, I believe, aren't they? So Ukrainian air defense is working, doing what it should be doing and shooting these things down. Remember, we're not dealing with a um, situation where they have air defense systems in place similar to that of um, Israel or as superior as Israel. They've got the best in the world, the Israeli... Um, you know, the dome, basically, the defence dome that they've got. We're dealing with Ukraine having a thing on the feet, relying on foreign infrastructure, kit and equipment to be able to get these drones and cruise missiles out of the sky. So, um, yeah, they're playing a strange game at the moment, aren't they, really? But those were shot down. Um, let's look at this. Two ferries were damaged after repelling Ukrainian attack on Kerch infrastructure, but there were no casualties, so... This is in this region. We've seen quite a bit of uh, um, action in the Taman Bay. Five Shahid drones from Vinstia region moving west. So they were seen 12 hours ago, and then obviously they were shot down um, the, shortly after that. And explosions in Kerch about 12 hours ago. This area, again, quite a, quite a prominent, prominent point at the moment. We've got some footage here of those uh, explosions. So it looks like aerial stuff taking place um some form of aerial bombardment it looks like yeah there are those like cruise missiles or something or some form of missiles mm. okay so quite a lot of activity happening there um at the night time or over the past 12 hours at night as well um going to Kharkiv, uh, at least four violent explosions were reported in this region so Let's have a look at these explosions right in the city centres of this area. Yeah, night attack, seven people were injured. Russian army hit the administrative building. So this administrative building thing that happened three hours ago was part of a slightly bigger um, bomb attack, really, when you think of it. Yeah, these were first noted 13 hours ago, and that building was first reported as being struck, the heat and admin building, three hours ago. Um, yeah, quite a lot of activity happening here explosions in, in these regions so yeah quite a lot going on troops i'm going to keep this one relatively short and sweet today um just getting some pertinent information that's been coming in over the past 12 hours or so um yeah the more people get to watch these videos the the more of them i'll do so if you do like this content or value it in any way please share this content on you know telegram channels you name it it is really going to help me out with uh, the views so if you can do anything today like share Share this, you know, especially on the Telegram groups and stuff like that. And um, and let's get some traction going, guys. But thanks for stopping by and watching. And uh, drop a comment in the comments bit. And I'll try and respond to you guys. Wherever you are, stay safe.